Mr. Dabrowski. Uh, thank you all for inviting the Illinois Policy Institute to speak on an issue that's extremely important to Illinoisans, and that's the, the very high property taxes we have in the state. Uh, we hear from homeowners every single day how they're struggling, how, they're, how seniors are getting kicked out of their homes, how low-income families can't stay in their homes. And we're also hearing from many uh, cities how they're suffering under high property taxes and what that's doing to their economic environment, making jobs harder and harder to come by. The work being done at the State House is very important, and the discussions on property taxes are very timely. However, what we have to do is we have to be careful that the urgency and the pressure to, to put on a property tax freeze forces us into partial reforms that could actually lead to a worse situation in just a few years. Property tax reform must be done responsibly so that we don't have unintended consequences in just a few years. So the current uh, solutions being debated are only focused on a property tax freeze. They only address the symptom, and the symptom is the high property taxes, but most of the discussions do not address the cost drivers, the actual drivers of why property taxes are so high in the first place. And there's really little discussion about if we're going to have property tax relief, we have to address the cost drivers, not just the freeze. We must understand that local governments are also in crisis. It's not just the state. And so when you think about local governments, they actually have a much harder time trying to find solutions to avoiding these problems. Uh, there are some governments that are bankrupt. Their debts far exceed their ability to pay, and we're seeing that from pensions, pension costs primarily. Uh, and they have no power. Local governments have no real power to rein in their spending. There is no real local control. Other cities are in recession. Moody's came out recently and said that the uh, metropolitan statistical areas of Blooming, uh, Bloomington, Carbondale, Peoria, and Quad Cities are in a recession. So when we think about property taxes, we have to think not just about the freeze, but about how we empower local governments to take control of their own fiscal and economic crises. What is it that this body is doing to help those local officials bring down the costs so that they can manage through their crises? So true reform, one that protects our cities, protects our residents, protects their households and their, their savings in their homes, and their livelihoods, protects their jobs, must be comprehensive. It must be comprehensive property tax reform that empowers local governments to control their costs. So what does that mean? What does empowerment mean? Let me give you a few. Number one, we've got to let local leaders negotiate better deals for their residents. Illinois has the most restrictive collective bargaining, I shouldn't say most restrictive, one of the top five most restrictive collective bargaining uh, laws in the nation. Our local government officials' hands are tied when they negotiate. So whether it's a school district or whether it's a city, they have no real way to negotiate because strikes are protected or, um, or arbitration is forced. Local governments have no power. So this is a reason why there's so much discussion of problems with controlling costs. Not only that, but we're an outlier compared to our neighboring states. All of them have done those kind of reforms. Illinois is last, and for that reason, our costs are going too high. Until those laws are loosened, we will never be a truly, we like to say that we're a locally controlled uh, state, but it's not true. Number two, local governments must bring down the cost of construction for local government projects. Prevailing wages, are way too high relative to what the ordinary Illinoisan makes and has to pay. I'll give you the example of a, of a carpenter in Rockford. The uh, prevailing wages in Rockford, Winnebago County, for a carpenter is about $125,000 when you add all salaries and wages. The private sector average wage in Rockford, $25,000. It's out of line. And, and, and private sector wages in the last decade have not risen. They're actually down 1% in the last decade in Rockford and yet they have to pay prevailing wages of 125000 That is much too high. Number three, we need to stop unfunded mandates. You guys have had lots of discussions about that, but the one that I don't hear is the unfunded mandate of local pension costs. Right now, local pension costs, police, fire, and in many cases, IMRF, are eating up budgets. In Springfield here alone, 100% of property taxes go straight to pension costs. There's nothing left for the libraries like it used to be. 
Uh, number four, we have to dramatically reduce the number of local governments. And I think there's a lot of good work being done on townships, but what I have not heard is the school district consolidation. Nearly two thirds, anywhere from 60% to two thirds of property tax bills go to pay for school districts. And yet we have the, the fifth most school districts in the nation. We are one of the most inefficient in the nation in terms of efficiency with school districts. That has to change. So, uh, Mr. Dabrowski, we're a little crunched to get to member questions. I would, I would just finish here then, please. So number five, uh, we need to work on workers' comp, and we all know that. Uh, in the end, our local officials in Illinois don't have true local control. A temporary property tax freeze without the local ability to reduce local costs is a very dangerous proposition. As long as contracts and costs continue to rise, local governments will borrow, underfund pensions, uh, find other taxes and fees until the temporary freeze is done, and then after the freeze, things will be worse. So for that reason, we need comprehensive property tax reform. We must address all the issues. Otherwise, we'll never really get out of this mess. Thank you. And Mr.